Morning. Today I'll be presenting uh, Syndicate. This is joint work with uh, collaborators Ching and Srinivas from Meta uh, and Aditya Akhila from UT Austin. Uh, this is work that I had done during my PhD days at UW Madison. So I'll be presenting Syndicate, which is a system for optimizing uh, network operations during distributed ML training. The intention is to speed up distributed ML training. Uh, and there are broadly two main knobs when we speak about network optimization, scheduling and execution planning. And Syndicate is the first system that jointly optimizes these two knobs. So uh, let me start by giving a brief history of network optimizations in distributed training leading up to Syndicate. So at the very beginning, we had uh, models uh, that were compute bound, and a way to parallelize these uh, models by replicating them across machines in a cluster uh, and doing parallel executions of these uh, models during training. Uh, this is a mode called as uh, data parallelism. And popular ML frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch have modules for doing distributed data parallelism. Uh, the scheduling heuristics for uh, uh, scheduling network operations in the cluster in these uh, famous uh, uh, ML frameworks was very simple. It just did simple FIFO uh, scheduling of network operations. So the very first wave of optimizations uh, looked at scheduling these network operations uh, and doing a better job uh, proposing better scheduling heuristics of how to uh, schedule these network operations over time. Uh, this did lead to a, a speed up. Uh, and over time, the uh, the GPU clusters, uh, the training clusters evolved to add more heterogeneous interconnects uh, and also protocols to use those interconnects, uh, such as RDMA and NVLink. Uh, and then the next wave of uh, research work looked at how to better optimize each of these network operations, uh, which is uh, broadly called execution planning optimizations, uh, and how to uh, better uh, leverage the heterogeneity in the network. And then over time, uh, the models got more and more complex. Uh, the, the types of parallelism that these models had evolved to uh, data parallelism, model parallelism, fully sharded data parallelism, multiple sorts of hybrid parallelism. Uh, and, these net, uh, and these models became uh, not just compute uh, bound, but they became memory bound or even network bound. Uh, now, you could use existing optimizations like scheduling optimizations, execution planning optimizations, but these uh, uh, two research threads looked at it in isolation. Uh, they do speed up uh, these uh, large hybrid parallel models, uh, but there is a significant speed up to be had by doing joint optimization, which brings me to Syndicate. So Syndicate uh, is a system which uh, says that scheduling and execution planning should be joint concerns. Uh, and I'll break this uh, talk into three parts. The first part is, why should we be doing joint optimization? Uh, the second part is, what makes joint optimization difficult uh, in uh, ML training stacks today? Uh, and then the last part, I'll go into the details of Syndicate on how to do joint optimization. So why should we be doing joint optimization? So I'll identify two main trends. Uh, and uh, look at how uh, existing optimizations uh, uh, fare in terms of speeding up network operations and show that there is a clear headroom when we do joint optimization. So the first trend is that over time, models are becoming more complex. They are less and less compute bound and they're bound by uh, memory and, and for, the sake, uh, for the interest of this talk, they are becoming network bound. Uh, and a prime example is deep learning recommendation models uh, at uh, large social media companies. Uh, these models are uh, network hungry when it comes to training. Uh, and I'll go into uh, the DLRM model architecture and show why these are becoming network hungry. So there are two parts, uh, two main parts in this uh, model. There is the uh, the, if you see, the architecture has bottom MLPs and top MLPs, uh, which are like conventional uh, 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 like pieces in the model architecture. 
and the way to train them is via data parallelism. But there is a second part uh, in this model which takes in sparse features. So sparse features, you can imagine them to be one-hot encoded vectors. Uh, you look up really large embedding tables for getting an embedding for these uh, sparse features. Uh, and uh, these embedding tables are so huge that they need to be sharded across machines, which leads to a, a, a form of training called model parallelism. Uh, and now, when you're putting these two together, there's a data parallel part, there's a model parallel part, uh, and at the top, they go into the top MLP. Uh, there is a conversion of the model parallel part to a data parallel part, and that induces a collective, uh, a, a type of network operation called all-to-all. Uh, previously, all reduce was a very common network operation seen, but with DLRM uh, and, and this form of hybrid parallelism, all to all is a new uh, collective. And this all to all collective is uh, very network intensive. Uh, why is that? All reduce, you could do uh, local reductions uh, on an intra machine level and then reduce the amount of uh, networking, you're, uh, the com amount of communication you're doing across machines. But there's no such uh, uh, optimizations in all to all. In all to all, you have to send all the payloads across network across all machines. Uh, and this is very uh, network intensive. So the first trend, in a sense, is that there are diverse ML collectives. Uh, exemplified as shown here by DLRM models. Uh, and in fact, uh, if we speak about more hybrid, uh, uh, different modes of parallelism, there are more collectives such as many one, one many, reduce scatter and all gather, uh, which, uh, which are quite network intensive. And this places a significant uh, emphasis on uh, doing, uh, on communication efficiency uh, and how to get there. The second trend is that as these models are becoming network bound, uh, the networking infrastructure is evolving. Uh, there are a vast, a vast variety of interconnects and protocols to uh, utilize those interconnects, uh, such as PCI, uh, PCI, RDMA, Ethernet. Uh, there are protocols such as uh, Roke, GPU Direct, uh, et cetera. Uh, the key takeaway of this trend is that there is a lot of heterogeneity, a lo lot of uh, multipath opportunity in networks today. So all right, we have these two trends. Uh, let's see uh, at how uh, conventional ML frameworks like PyTorch uh, and TensorFlow uh, uh, do. Uh, so this is a, a trace of compute operations and network operations from a production uh, DLRM workload. Uh, the compute operations are in black, the network operations are in orange, uh, and this shows uh, how they are scheduled over time. So the key highlight here is that there are gaps in the compute stream and there are gaps in the network stream. And the gaps in the compute stream are larger than in the network stream, which is because the compute operations are waiting on the blocking operations in the communication stream, uh, waiting for them to complete. Uh, so communication blocks compute. Now let's see at existing optimizations. First is like uh, scheduling optimizations uh, proposed by papers such as uh, Byte Scheduler, uh, where it goes from uh, like FIFO heuristic proposed by ML, uh, which ML frameworks do to uh, a LIFO ordering. Now if, if uh, we keep in mind that there is like a dependency across these orange operations and respecting those dependencies if we reorder them in time, uh, we can maximize the compute and communication overlap, and which gives us the picture at the bottom. Uh, so there is an improvement in a single iteration time uh, of DLRM, uh, so great. Uh, now if given this order, we layer execution planning optimizations on top uh, uh, of these scheduling optimizations, uh, now respecting the uh, dependency in these orange operations, uh, there is an opportunity to uh, better utilize the heterogeneity in the network and overlap some of these uh, uh, collectives. So one example in this figure is that the all-to-all -all collective is overlapped with two all-reduce collectives. Uh, so the, the, the key role of execution planning optimizations is to maximize the communication-communication overlap. Uh, 
Uh, and in fact, in this paper, we come up with smarter ways of doing this overlap. So in the picture right at the bottom, uh, there are two collectives all reduce all to all. We can break a larger all reduce collective into smaller uh, uh, pieces. Uh, so there's like in the all reduce, there is first a local reduction, then there's reduction across, uh, across cross network, uh, and then there's a broadcast. So these are three small pieces. Uh, and all to all can be broken into two small pieces. And when we are overlapping these two collectives, because we have broken the, the larger blobs of network operations into smaller pieces, uh, we can schedule these individual pieces on uh, the appropriate set of uh, interconnects. And when we are overlap overlapping all to all and all reduce, two of these smaller pieces can go on a, a separate set of uh, uh, network interconnects. So, Great, uh, why should we be doing joint optimization? So, so far we saw that these two optimizations were in isolation, first scheduling, and then execution planning optimization layered on top of it. But we, uh, there is uh, a, a much more better way of doing that. First, we can iterate over all possible uh, scheduling orders, figure out what is the best possible way of doing execution planning for each of those scheduling uh, orders, and then in this joint space, get an optimal. And this figure just shows that, that uh, we do joint uh, optimization uh, and uh, simultane simultaneously maximize compute communication overlap as well as communication and communication overlap. And if we place these on a single figure, uh, we do see that joint optimization for the scale version of DLRM production uh, trace uh, does help. Uh, now, doing joint optimization requires global knowledge. It requires information about the model training uh, DAG. It requires information about the topology and the available interconnects. Uh, and this is uh, this brings me to the next part of the talk, which is what makes joint optimization difficult. Uh, this global information is not readily available in uh, ML training stacks today, which prevents us from doing uh, joint optimization. Uh, so uh, this is a look at uh, the current ML training stack. There are two main pieces, the application layer, which you can imagine as uh, uh, being uh, the responsibility of ML frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. Uh, they mainly do scheduling of uh, uh, these ML collectives. And there is the communication layer, which is uh, more the responsibility of uh, frameworks such as Nickel by NVIDIA or UCC uh, and so on, uh, which is closer to the network topology. Uh, now, uh, when we talk about scheduling, uh, when uh, the app layer is doing scheduling. It has limited information about the network topology down below. There's no arrow going upwards. Uh, and with this limited knowledge, uh, the uh, ML frameworks or the research works on scheduling optimizations do very simple uh, naive heuristics by looking at the structure of the DAG and reordering these operations. Uh, so the scheduler uses limited info. Uh, and then there's a narrow API between the app layer and the comp layer. The app layer just pushes the schedule of these collectives, and the comp layer simply looks at these uh, collectives in isolation, does some execution uh, planning optimizations, and schedules them uh, on the uh, network one at a time without changing the order. Uh, so there is a narrow API, and there's no visibility into how the DAG looks like in the communication layer. So uh, in a sense, the stack today is very rigid. It has uh, limited flexibility uh, and lack the interfaces to be able to do joint optimization, which brings me to the uh, uh, third part of the talk. Syndicate does joint optimization, and how does it do it? Uh, so what we desire is a, a new stack with new interfaces uh, to do uh, joint optimization, uh, and this uh, stack should be future-proof. It should be able to handle all sorts of new uh, parallelism modes of model training and also any uh, new emerging uh, network technologies with new interconnects added 
to the networking part of GPU clusters. So talking about Syndicate uh, uh, ML stack as a whole, there are two main pieces uh, inspired from uh, the SDN world. There's a control plane, which has all the smarts, and there's a data plane, which is a very dumb enforcer uh, of whatever the control plane decides. So the control plane pulls out the execution, uh, uh, execution planning optimization, scheduling planning optimizations of the existing stack, uh, brings them to a central location. It gets all the global information about the topology, uh, about the training bag, and jointly uh, searches the space, uh, the joint space, uh, by using probabilistic search to come up with an optimal joint uh, optimizer plan. Uh, and the control plane conveys this joint uh, plan to the data plane, and data plane simply enforces this plan. Uh, so the optimizer plan has two main pieces. First, it gives the execution plan, uh, which is how to break these collectives into smaller units. These smaller units, we call them uh, motifs. Uh, and it has a scheduling uh, order, uh, which is just how these individual motifs should be uh, executed uh, over time. Uh, and the syndicate enforcer simply uh, follows this plan uh, and schedules them uh, on the network. Uh, talking about uh, uh, motives, uh, so motives uh, are ways or operations, uh, uh, ways of breaking collectives into uh, smaller pieces. There is an extensible, well-defined algebra uh, of the space of operations that allow to break these collectives into motives. And some examples are uh, shown via pictures uh, here, where the all-reduce uh, collective can be broken down into a reduce motif followed by an all-reduce motif uh, followed by a broadcast motif. Uh, and all to all can be broken down into two parallel uh, uh, streams of uh, uh, network transfers. Uh, and uh, Syndicate does scheduling at the granularity of uh, motifs. Uh, and we do a probabilistic search over the joint space of all possible ways of breaking down collectives into smaller pieces uh, and scheduling them. Uh, please refer to the paper for more details about the algebra and how to do this. Uh, coming to the evaluations, the uh, testbed, uh, each machine is a, has dual socket CPUs. It has eight V100 GPUs, uh, fully connected using NV switch. Uh, two front-end NICs, eight back-end uh, Roki NICs for RDMA connectivity across uh, machines. And we uh, put together 16 such machines to get a 128 GPU uh, cluster. The workload has four production DLRM models, uh, one NLP model, one vision model, a, a good mix of different uh, uh, types of applications and different modes of parallelism. And the baselines, uh, we have the byte scheduler, uh, which does uh, uh, LIFO scheduling plus some amount of execution planning in the form of Bayesian segmentation uh, and uh, a, a hand-optimized model. So the hand-optimized model, you can imagine it to be the best uh, scheduling optimization uh, done in isolation and the best uh, execution uh, planning optimization layered on top of, these, uh, of this uh, scheduling optimization. Uh, so how does Syndicate do? Syndicate uh, does well on models A1 through uh, A4, which are uh, the DLRM recommendation models. Uh, model A5 is the uh, NLP model, and A6 is the vision model. So let's look at the DLRM models. Uh, A1 through A3, uh, uh, these are hybrid parallel models doing both data parallelism, model parallelism. Uh, and as we go from A1 through A3, the size of the embedding tables gets larger. Uh, and there is one blocking all-to-all -all, uh, network collective, which uh, more and more dominates the iteration time as we go from model A1 through A3. So there are lesser, fewer overlap opportunities, which is why the, uh, the amount of improvement speed up over baselines goes down slightly. Uh, Model A4 is the fully sharded data parallel uh, DLRM model. Uh, this sees the maximum am amount of uh, training throughput speed up as compared to the baselines, because fully sharded data parallelism does not just have all reduce and all to all collectives, but also a richer 
set of collectives uh, such as uh, reduce scatter and all gather, which means there are more uh, opportunities for uh, uh, compute uh, communication and communication communication overlap. And lastly, uh, we see a significant hit, uh, a small hit to uh, throughput with syndicate for the vision model. Uh, because the vision model just has all reduced collectives uh, in a sequential manner, and uh, byte scheduler actually is the optimal solution uh, for vision models. And there is a slight hit to syndicate's performance because of the syndicate enforcer uh, overheads. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we saw that uh, scheduling and execution planning should be jointly optimized. And Syndicate does this by doing a ML network stack uh, redesign. Uh, we propose the abstraction of motives to break down collectives to do fine-grained scheduling uh, and uh, do a much better job of uh, 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 speeding up uh, distributed training. And we see 21 to 74% gains uh, in terms of throughput speed up for large recommendation model training. Uh, I'd like to end the talk with a small wish that uh, when we talk about compute operations, like when we do large matrix multiplications, there is a red set of interfaces which takes you from like the higher level matrix uh, multiplication to the low level kernels th that you schedule on the GPUs. Uh, and this whole stack has like a red set of interfaces, uh, a nice diverse open community, uh, and they did joint execution planning and scheduling uh, and scheduling optimization quite a while back. Uh, I hope the same happens for uh, when we t talk about uh, network operations. Uh, Syndicate is the first step uh, uh, in, in in those regards, and I hope uh, we get to see many more papers. Uh, thanks. <laughs>